Okay. Um, obviously, uh, going into a big weekend here, conference play, um, two highly ranked teams. Um, uh, we uh, came off a weekend with, with a bye weekend in which we uh, gave our kids the, the, the weekend off, which I think they needed and uh, appreciated. Um, had a really good practice on Monday and, and uh, played a good softball game. Last night, just got beat and uh, had a plan go going in to that game to throw Kelly and carry both. So um, we weren't going to stray away from that plan no matter what. We just felt like both of them needed to uh, pitch after not pitching over the the weekend. So, um, but credit Wichita State. They're a really good team. I think they'd fare very, very well in our conference this year. Um, one of their better teams that I've seen without a doubt. So um, good softball game. Um, uh, and I think it'll, it prepares us to, to, to go into this weekend against Texas and go down to Austin and hopefully continue to play well in conference like we have up to this point. So um, excited about the opportunity to play these last two weekends to kind of have everything in our hands. Um, this team has worked hard to get to this point and it hasn't been pretty at all, at all times, but they continue to win and um uh that's the bottom line in, in our in our game so um uh just again just looking forward to getting on the bus and heading down to austin and and uh, having a great weekend of softball games all right i'll go ahead and open it up to questions yeah coach, coach, uh, coach. i'll just ask you oh go ahead dean you're good okay you're good sam go for it all right, Coach, you, you know, I, I was just curious. Uh, we could, you know, the games, the, the next six games, uh, looking at the, the rankings and, uh, you know, just the Big 12 and how much it means, I'm sure that those six games are probably maybe even the most six important games of uh, the regular season for sure. Um, so we can kind of uh, put that aside, and I'm sure we'll get to that. But looking back on this season so far, 36-6, uh, and six, what do you – how would you assess your season – thus far maybe before we get to the biggest games how would you assess what you've done thus far um yeah i mean we're put ourselves in a good spot um you know we're a game behind the leader um in the conference there's six games i'd like to have back those are the six games that keep you up at bed, bed night um you know i i think we've gotten to a point here at osu where we expect to win every game we go play i, I mean um, it hasn't always been like that, but it's what we've worked really hard to get to. And this may be harder than what, what we've done to get to this point. You know, when you get to this point, um, we're not totally the, we're, we're not, we're not, I wouldn't call us you know, the chased, but you know, we are getting closer to that. We're still chasing though. And that's the beauty of this. And um, I, I, I go back, I've told you guys this, I remember coach Walton, when I took this job, he said, enjoy, enjoy the, this time, because this is the funnest time is when you're chasing. And, um, and I, I think at times, I think, I think, you know, maybe we've gotten a little bit complacent or we look too far ahead at times. That's normal for kids and even adults, uh, as you, um, you know, it's just, you, you always, you have a tendency to look ahead, but. We've just been trying to remind our kids to not to focus on today, especially our seniors after last year and everything that they've gone through. Like just every day is the most important day. And last night was the most important game of the whole year. We didn't win. Um, now today's the most important practice day of the whole year and, and just getting prepared to, to go into to Friday. And, and so um, that's kind of the way we're taking this. Um, you know, we've had a nice year, um, but um, We've been doing this for the last four or five years, so it's we put ourselves in great spots. I, I, it's this is this is where it, this is where it kind of the the crossroads meet, and 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 we need to play very well on Friday night um, against Texas. I mean that's that's just where it's at. So I I mean we can talk about this when the season is over with. Kind of we'll assess the whole year, but I think you'll have a lot of people here that'll be very disappointed if we don't play well the last couple week, week weekends and host a regional and 
a super and, and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's all in our hands. We control it. That's the beauty. That's all you want is to be able to control your own destiny here. And we have that, that again. And my last question for you before I turn it over to Dean and some of the big dogs is, uh, you know, I think that from, from what I've seen so far this season, this team has showed that it can beat anyone in the country. But uh, I'm sure the, you know, local softball reporters for Texas and OU, they'd probably say the same thing about their team. And the rankings would probably say that out, too. Um, we got some true powerhouses colliding a little bit. Uh, what record would you consider a success during this next six game stretch? I don't know if you have a number in mind or just a feeling to get to, you know, to be playing well into the postseason. Uh, what would you describe as, you know, a success for these next six games? One and oh. Mm. One and oh. I, I think I'd be a fool to put anything else out there. Um, we need to be one and oh after Friday night. I mean, that's really what we've got to be is one and oh. Um, that's that's what we're we're playing for, um, and and I don't mean to, I don't mean I don't hope you don't take take that in any other way. I just I mean we need to take this one day at a time, and um, that's why we take it. We didn't go into Kansas going we got to go three and zero. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go win Friday night, and we didn't. We played hor horribly, and then we said hey we got to go one and one, and then we got to go two and one, and then you start to just roll. And so one day at a time, it's the same message. Same thing I've been trying to tell these kids and uh, we've got some wonderful kids on th this team. And, you know, I had a really good kind of emotional um, talk with Carrie this uh, maybe 10 days back. And just, I could, I, she was having a horrible type day. I could see the way she walked in and I was like, what is wrong? What's, what's wrong with you? She goes, it's just like caving in on me. And I'm like, what's caving in. It's like, well, what's next? And, I don't want this season to end and I don't want this. And I'm like, <laughs> Carrie, you're, you're, you're shouldering way too much. And I think that's, that's, that's a lot of the, of the, of these kids. And that's, these are humans. Like they're normal people. Like, even though they're really good at what they do, like all of you are good at what you do. Like they have real concerns outside of softball that kind of wear, wear on them. And so to talk to her and kind of help me too, with a message, you know, to the team and just enjoy today and leave everything on this the season it's going to end i can't tell you when but it's gonna end and um the things that you'll remember when you're my age is is the day-to-day -day, the memories the fun times and you know no no nobody's gonna talk about wins and and losses i, I i've been on some championship teams and when we're all back together no nobody talks about personal performance and wins and losses you just talk about the fun times that uh, that, that, that that you had and so just slow everything down have a blast and and so one and oh that's what we're trying to do and and um and that's all i feel like would be fair to even even answer thank you coach got it hey coach i know it's kind of become my weekly question but uh what's the scouting report on texas uh, good softball team. Um, very well coached. Um, a lot of good kids, um, talented did kids, their lineups, very, very good. Um, you know, they've got some speed. The Jefferson kid can really, um, can really go. I think she's one of the better hitters is in the country. Um, seems to be able to do just about anything. Um, you know, they, um, uh, They've got some power with Rhodes and Iacopo and a couple of those other kids. Um, obviously, I have some speed. Um, Pitching-wise, I think, uh, obviously, O'Leary's their number one. And then, you know, I guess you go to Jacobson next. Um, and then maybe uh, Day. Um, but, you know, a very good complement of arms. Um, you know, maybe their weak spot has been their defense. Um kind of not the haven't played as good as they're capable of up to, to this point. Um, but, um, you know, they're just like any buddy. Uh, they're very talented, have some of these super seniors who can, um, who can compete, know how to compete, know how to win. They know how to win. A lot of those kids came from Oregon that are their top kids. So they, they know how to win. Um, you know, they've done that for a long time, not afraid of competition. They're, they're not going to run. 
Um, so uh, it's got a lot of respect. We're just, I mean, we're we're gonna, we're just going to go play to our standard. You know what I mean? And that's it. We're not playing Texas or it's not the you know most important game of their their life. It's just let's just go play softball to our standard, and uh, I think we'll we'll be okay. And then uh, I think I might already know the answer to this question, but are you going carry Kelly carry this weekend or are you keeping that secret? Uh, no secrets. You, you, you know me, carry carries the first day, but like, I'll tell you if it takes Carrie and Kelly to win game one, then we'll throw, we'll throw them both. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to run from game one. We're going to go try to win. It's the most important game of the whole year. That is this next game. Right. And so we'll do everything that we can to win the first game. So, um, you know, the idea is for Carrie to go, go, go out there and throw well and us to score runs and make plays. And that's the that's the bottom line. And then uh, last question for me. What's the atmosphere like going into this top 10, you know, series game? I mean, does it have a different feel or is it just same day in the office? Um, I think in our office, we're about the same. I don't um, we're, we're not like all of a sudden like doing more homework you know we're, we all do our own thing and and um kind of if you don't you have to prepare against these guys and watch you know the things that you need to watch and be ready for um so i we're you know same old thing um you know and and um you know i know you know john's doing his deal jeff's doing his deal i'm doing things i do shippy's doing her her deal we're all we're all just you know kind of in that routine of of what we prepare and how we we prepare ourselves um and uh we're not a crazy video group i know there's some schools out there that force their kids to watch hours upon hours of stuff and becomes overload you know if you ask me they, they need to be normal kids too and 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 re re remember that they're i mean when you were eight you, you you didn't go watch film before you played wiffle ball in your front yard you just went and played you just went and you were just going to be a great athlete. And that's what we got to give them, them enough info, but also know that they need to be free to, to play well. So um, uh, it'll be fun. I don't know what their crowd is like right now. Um, you know, we've never played there under Mike White. Um, you know, we've played them here, um, beat them two out of three, I think. Um, so uh, we'll go there. I don't know what it's like. You know, it's the, the atmosphere there in my previous years has never been like very good. If you want to know the very truth, like it's just okay. Um, so, but, but they're not, they've never been as good in my time here as what they are now too. So we'll see what that's like. Can't wait. Thank you, coach. Yep. Hey, Kenny, thanks for your time today. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, you got it. Hey, I wanted to ask you, you know, you have to be mentally tough to be a pitcher. When Kelly and Logan got to OSU, did you see that already ingrained in them or did that mature mostly in college? And with Carrie being a transfer, was that easy to see inside of her? You know, um, I don't think you really know that um, until they get here. You think you may know things, but I don't think we get to see them compete against the caliber of teams that they compete against here. And this will test your your uh, mental toughness pretty quick. Uh, we finally got to a point in this program where we can see it every day in practice because we've got enough talented kids here that you figure it out fast. You, you have certain kids that you think, man, they're going to thrive. And then it's like, what happened? Like they got punched and they, it's like, they've never been punched. Um, and, and so, you know, Carrie, um, Carrie, I didn't know. Um, you know, I obviously saw her numbers, which tells me, you know, we, when we dove into those and see the teams that, you know, you, you can go watch kids and go, man, they, this kid did this last year was 25 and five, but the 20 wins were, were against whoever. And the five losses were really a far comparison from what they were on the other games. You know what I mean? They're weaker, you know, be better teams and just all of a sudden starting, you know, they had a ton of walks. They, they weren't the uh, same. So I think you can look at that kind of stuff. Um, but really until you get with them and get to know them and they feel good about trusting the coaching staff and their teammates and all that stuff, you really don't get to know who these kids are. I would tell you that Logan was probably a kid that um, has surprised me. She's pretty mentally tough. She doesn't let things bother her. Um, she can let a bat out and go really fast. Um, 
Kelly, um, you know, Kelly, it didn't start out good here for Kelly. Um, that's just the truth. And I think she'd tell you, you the same thing. Uh, we, I think we all had doubts that Kelly was going to be able to perform at this level through the first seven, eight months here. And that's why we decided to red shirt. Um, and so we got to find out a lot about Kelly's mental toughness during that, from that red shirt talk on, because she didn't just sit around. She said, okay, it's time to really go to work. And she did that. Um, and then, you know, um, and then back to, to Carrie, you know, we got her, so we didn't have the time to recruit her for a long period, like period of time to really know that. So the idea is to be able to help them get to that point. And I don't really know what the answers are to that, except creating competition amongst your team every day to find out who, who can handle this, you know, and, um, to put, like, we like to keep our, uh, depth chart up here in my office. I mean, it's, 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 it's wide open and kids walk in. There's some kids that walk in and check that a lot, uh, in the fall. There's some kids who are scared to death to see that. Well, they're probably not mentally tough. Um, there's some kids that look at that and want to talk and go, why am I there? You know what I mean? Probably mentally tough, um, because they've got the guts to walk in here and, and say that stuff. So I think it tells you a lot about kids, um, it, it may not, you, you're in your first read may not always be right, but our, our job is to, to try to get some toughness here because that's what it takes. I mean, you're going to get beat up here, um, in this conference, um, against our schedule that we're going to try to play, um, and then everyday work here. And, and so, um, it's a great question. I wish I had an answer. I wish I had the, um, the secret to find out, Hey, how, how do you, how do you find out what they're really like before they show up here or before you, before you put it on paper that, that you want them to come here? Just one last question. When you have the pitching staff that you have, how excited do they get when they play a dominant offense, kind of like a Texas or an Oklahoma, do they take on that? I got this attitude or just what's it like for these pitchers? How much do they embrace this challenge? Yeah, I, I think they're they're all in. They're they've been waiting for this, just like the hitters and just like the coaches and everybody. There, these this is why you come. This is this is what playing at a power five school and a top three conference in the country. This is why you come here for the chance to have this, um, and for everybody, the chance to, isn't always there, but it's worth that risk, right? It's worth that. I want to see if I, I want to see how I stack up against the very best and so um this is what it's all about and for us it's kind of weird like our schedule always sets up pretty close to the same where we're playing texas and OU at the end you know what i mean which is kind of cool so um i enjoy that um you know back in my first year i kind of wish we could play ou first so we could get that over with now i'm like okay we got it it's coming down to the wire right and and for i mean that's who we're that's where we're not we're not measuring ourselves against anybody other than the top. So uh, you might as well have them at the very end and you want to be playing your very best and you want to know what a super regional is going to be like. That's what it's like. And, and, and that's the one thing that the SEC um, and now the, the pack uh, pack 10 or pack 12, I don't even know what they call them anymore, but that's what they're getting back to as well. Like it's a super regional type weekend a lot. And, um, and now with us, you know, us doing our, our part, Texas now doing their part, um, you know, Baylor has been pretty good at doing their part. Um, I think everybody else is, is starting to really improve in this conference. And, um, and that's all we can do is, is do our part. And, and I know that, um, as much as we, you know, fight and claw with OU and, and that kind of stuff, I know that they appreciate that too, because it's preparing them as well. And, and that's what it's all about. Kenny, thanks for your time. Have a good week. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Hey, Kenny, um, thanks for taking some time. Uh, I don't know if you saw uh, last week, the Washington Post had a piece looking at whether there were inequities between the softball World Series and the baseball World Series. And since you've been, you've been to both um, and obviously coached recently in Oklahoma City, I wanted to ask you a couple questions. Um, I wanted to know from a, the coaching standpoint um, with the Women's College World Series, What's the dialogue like um, from the NCA? I know you guys get a chance as participants to fill out surveys and those sorts of things, but 
what's the give and take there between coaches, administrators, and, and the NCAA on, on the tournament and specifically the series? Well, you know, I'm going to be careful way I answer this, but um, I, 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 I think we all, we all see, you know, we all, the basketball deal really probably opens some eyes. And again, I, I only know what, what I saw on red. I don't know how much of that is, is real. I, I, I think there's probably some reality there and, and I don't like it. Um, I actually saw that and I smiled. Um, I didn't get upset because I think we all know that there's some, there's some definite differences in the tournaments um, and whether it's baseball or softball um, or women's and men's basketball. So the, the idea is how do we change this? How do we, how do we get it there? Well, we, we, you know, I, I know that softball, for at least from what we've been told by ESPN we outdraw the baseball um, viewership. It's like not even close from what I've been told, but they still outdo us in the advertisement and the almighty, the dollar. And so how do we get that change? I think it's just continuing to, uh, you know, grow our game. We're, we're doing that. We're on the right path. We're on the right TV path. We're on the right um, uh, improving our game. Um, and, and all that, but I, I would tell you that I think the NCA softball people, um, the people who are running the softball are spending every dollar that, that they get. Um, they continue to make it better each year. Um, are we, do our girls get the same gifts and stuff like that as the guys do? I don't think so. Um, I've been to the baseball thing. I mean, they're passing out stuff like, like it's candy. I mean, and that I can remember going as an athlete. Um, and the Oakley guy shows up, right. And, um, and he's passing out free Oakley's and he's taking your old ones and he's replacing the, the lenses and the nose pieces. You're sitting there going, Oh my gosh. Um, and every, you know, your companies are that you're sponsored by or doing stuff. I can tell you that like Nike, if you're a Nike school and you get to the, uh, WCWS, um, it's like Christmas. And it's the way it ought to be. And Nike started that. And I, I told our girls here the first year, I said, you want to get to Nike Christmas at the Women's College World Series. I mean, you can't imagine the things that you get. It's crazy. Shoes, sweatshirts, shorts. The girls are getting tight sports bras, socks, backpacks, sunglasses. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. It's absurd. But it's the way it ought to be. I mean, they're, they, they, they have earned that. And so... I know that Nike's doing their part. Um, and, and, and that's why I tell them a lot, you know, these kids are motivated by gifts, you know, that's what we're motivated by nowadays. And so, um, you know, we continually talk to them about, Hey, if you want that stuff, you've got to go, you got to get there. And so um, I, I, Jenny, I think in my opinion, the softball people are doing everything that they can with the allotted money that they have. I don't know what the money is. I don't know how it compares. I don't know any of that. Um, so it'd be very unfair for me to say it's not the, the, the uh, same. Um, but I know that we have to continue to do our job as a sport, as administrations. Um, we need more schools like Oklahoma S State who care about softball. And that's where it comes from. It takes these ADs at these schools to say, hey, it, it, this is this game is way better than, than baseball. You know, I know that baseball is our America's pastime, but these girls are really dang good. And the game is half as long, literally half as long. Um, they make the same plays. They hit just as big a ho of, 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 of home runs. They bat flip. They, uh, they talk a little trash. They're beautiful. Um, they're all of this. Uh, why wouldn't you want to watch our game? So it takes more people to just see it, invest, and it just takes time. I think it's being built to have sustainability for a long time. And I think that's the most important thing. You know, as of any, you know, as good as, as, as anyone that if it gets built too fast, it it, it just it doesn't have a good foundation. And um, it's being, I think it's being built right. I'm not in every meeting, you know, 
Coach Holder always tells me, "Hey, if you want to, if if you want change, be a part of change." Well, I don't know that I want to be on all all, all the of those things. It takes a lot of time and a lot of energy away from your team, and so I just kind of a lot of times I sit sit back, back I sit back and just say, "Tell us what the rules are, and we'll play by those rules." Um, and if you want to be a part of change, you don't like it, then get on a rules deal and make a change. Um, so, um, but. I, I'd like to see that article. I think I'll pull it up because I didn't know that that was even out there. Um, but I can tell you this, when you're at the Women's College World Series, you feel pretty important um, and they do a nice job and it's it's pretty cool. Hey, because you you guys played Houston up at the, at the uh, stadium earlier this season and since obviously last year, COVID put everything on the kibosh with the latest renovations, I'm curious just because you're one of the few that have seen it, what what was your impression of the changes from you know when you guys were last in the series to what it is now, and and just filling filling needs and wants that you guys have as teams when you're in that facility? Well, they've really improved the the facility over the last ten years for the athletes and the coaches. Just no porta potties in the dugouts, um, actual places, you know, training rooms things to have. I mean, I can remember I was in there with porta potties. It was disgusting. It's crazy. Um, so, you know, now they've improved the field. The field was always just okay. Those guys were working their tails off with, with a, a bad product. Now they've got a sand based field that it's going to drain and they can do things that they want to do. Um, you know, the, the seating. Wow. I mean, I can't wait to hear what it's like full when, Oklahoma and OSU are playing a game there. You know what I mean? In the, in the college world series, I cannot wait to experience that because it is going to be rocking. And, um, and so I just, I think they've done a great job. I know they want to continue to do, do, do more. I have no idea what it's like for a fan um, because I don't know how good the bathrooms are. They've never been, been great. You know what I mean? I think they've added more and done more. They need that, uh, the concessions, all that kind of stuff. So they're doing it. And, and I think it just takes, it just takes time and it, it takes a commitment from the NCAA as well as Oklahoma city. Um, I think uh, OKC is all in um, this state has really embraced this tournament um, and it's really cool. Uh, it's really cool to see. And um, you know, I think we're, our, our fan base is just growing exponentially because of the game and the way these girls play it. So um being inside felt really cool it, it was obviously empty um and i wish you hadn't reminded me about that game but um uh but yeah we did get going there i'm not sure we showed up but we we, we did play <laughs> that upper deck can be a little bit intimidating maybe that yeah. was the problem that day it's really cool yeah it's really cool thanks kenny yep hi coach hey how are you I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, so I just have a question about just your team in general. Um, just what are some of the things that as you enter into the last few games going into postseason play, what are some of the things that you think they're doing well and some things that they might be able to improve on? Yeah, I, I think we're actually um, kind of, you know, we've only had one game in the last seven days, so it's kind of hard to tell that. Um but um, we, we are, uh, we seem to be playing well. Um, you know, I mean, the defense has been pretty solid. We had an error last night that cost us a uh, run, um, but we made some other nice plays. Um, kind of finding our groove in our lineup for, for the first time in the whole year. Like last year, we kind of got set pretty quick. It's taken us a little bit of time. Moving Alexander down to nine has been a big spark. Um, and Reagan Wright and Richburg, if they start to hit like they have been, that really helps us, you know, and, and if you get the kids that have been going good to keep going good, it makes our lineup tough. So feel good about our offense. Um, we didn't string together enough hits since last night. That's pretty obvious. Um, but either did Wichita State. It came down to us not making a play. Otherwise, the game's tied. So um, pitching, we've been pitching well all, all year long. Um, so I feel good about that. Um and defensively, we've been we've been pretty good. So um, you know, we we're making plays and all that. So um, I, I don't know that I feel like we're not doing anything great. You know, maybe I can answer that a little bit better that uh, this next week. You know, you play a a team who's talented like you. The talent matches up. So okay, now 
let's see who's who's a little tougher and, and all that kind of stuff. We'll know that at the end of this weekend and um, uh, maybe a kind of a, a weak way to answer that. But I really, I feel good about the way we're playing and, and don't really see anything that's been glaring here over the last bit that's concerning. Kind of to play off that. So what are some of the things that change when you do play um, in a team that's kind of close to you in talent? Uh, like you're going to play these next two weekends and going in, like I said, to the postseason. Yeah, I think the only thing that changes maybe just a bit is just up and down the lineup, you know, the the speed of the uh, game. You know, if this becomes like a super regional speed, a World Series speed, everything gets a little faster. So it's like, who who can man- who can manage that? You know what I mean? Who, who, who stays normal? Uh, this is what I try to, this is my thing I've always said, it's just the teams that win these games are the teams that stay normal. You know, Texas... Texas got um, taken out of their normal pace by OU in their last conference series, you know, against, well, it wasn't their last one, but it was against OU and they bounced back fine. You know what I mean? Um, but that's what, that's what the most elite teams can kind of do to you. They make you feel like you can't um, make one bad pitch or one bad play. And then it, com- it compounds. So um, the key for anything in the, in these games is, who can stay normal, who can control their, their heartbeat. And, um, and then those teams usually are, are the ones who win and play the very best. Does that kind of go back to the mental toughness you were talking about the teams that are m- the most mental tough stay yeah. calm? Yeah. You got to let things go. I mean, we're going to, we're not going to play totally clean. Either are they, um, you know, uh, we're going to both put pressure on each other um, and um, the teams that can just not let things snowball into you know into more more things that's that's really you know limiting extra bases um free passes you know what i mean uh um you know it could be decided by one hit in each game and and it's just about you know uh hopefully those runners who got on they had to earn their way on either you know by hits or whatever so um you know these are fun games they're 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 not fun if you're john because you feel like you're you know you're hinging on every pitch um, but it's also why you come here because it's a blast and, and, um, it's competing and, and, uh, there's going to be a winner. There's going to be a, lo- a loser and no matter what, we're both still going to be really good. Um, you know, I mean, it's not going to change. Perfect. Thanks coach. Good luck this weekend. Thanks guys. Is that all for coach? Thanks Perfect. guys. Thank you coach. See you, guys. See you next week. All right, and Sid is on here, so I will go ahead and turn it over to you guys. So, Hi. <laughs> hey, Sydney, can you hear me all right? Yep. Sweet. Um, okay, so I want to ask you because uh, what Coach was telling me was, you know, uh, it, looking at these next six games, they might be the most important of the six games, at least regular season-wise, on y'all's schedule. And uh, I think he gave a great answer. I asked him, you know, kind of what would you consider a success in these next six games? And he said 1-0 because, uh, you know, it's a little bit of coach speak, but it's so true. It's like, you know, to take every one game at a time. But I'm curious, how hard is that for the players, especially like you who have uh, been in these kind of big games before, to, uh, you know, maybe not not look ahead or, you know, even if you get down uh, and, lose, and drop the first game, how hard is that to say, you know what, we're going to battle back and go 1-0 and just take one game at a time? Yeah, um, I think the main thing is just kind of like he said, we just have to focus on one game at a time and um, to kind of add on to what he said at the end, like things are going to happen. So we've just got to be able to have a really short memory and um, just move on to the next play and the next, you know, at bat. So um, I think if we just have a good mindset of kind of um, moving on, being able to move on and just taking it game, game, I mean, honestly, to break it down, just really like pitch to pitch, honestly, and inning to inning. So it's really just a matter of kind of staying in the moment and kind of winning every battle that we can, whether it's getting walks or getting hit by pitch. So I think just kind of taking it slow and just slowing the game down for us is what's going to be key these next six games. Do you find uh, slowing the game down and, you know, maybe having that shorter memory is uh kind of the same or is it more difficult in bigger games like against Texas and OU where uh, you know they might matter more on you know the standings or big 12 top of standings like that Uh, does it matter to you more pitch by pitch or is it you know 
if you make an error against uh, a small school, is it the same feeling as an error against OU? Kind of what's that like for you? Yeah, I think I think it's the same feeling, but I think you know the. Uh, I think it means a little bit more and it's a little bit harder to get past, I think in these tougher games, because um, I don't see these games being, you know, blowouts by any means. Uh, The next six games, I think it's going to be a pretty tight game um, for both sides. So I think definitely if, you know, you struggle or make an error or strike out, it's definitely tougher to take in these types of, in these types of games, because you know that that could be the difference. Um, to win or lose so um it's gonna be tough but you know if we just stay stay with us and play like we have been we're gonna be fine so Sydney thank you for the time good luck this weekend thanks hey Sydney how are you doing today good how are you I'm doing good uh last week I was talking to coach and Reagan about the home run chain I kind of got the history lesson behind it but uh, I'm just going to continue on that this week um just a couple of specific questions uh Who gives the chain to who in certain situations? So the person that hits the last home run is in charge of the chain and then they give it on to the next person. So whether it's what, if we're traveling or um, if we're at home, the person or hit the last home run. And then uh, does that, does the chain function kind of as an extra motivator? I know outside of, if you're, you know, up to bat strictly to bunt, you're trying to hit the ball as far as you can, uh, you know, 99% of the time, but does that thought kind of cross your mind ever like, Oh, if I hit this far, I'm getting the chain next. Yeah. I think it's, I don't think that's something that we really think about, but it's really cool. Like once you cross home plate to have someone waiting for you to give you the chain. So I think it does add a little bit of um, motivation, but um, I wouldn't say it really affects anyone's performance in the box, but it's definitely something that's kind of uh, cool to look forward to. And then uh, what do you think that does? The, what do you think the chain does kind of team chemistry dugout wise? Um, yeah, it's really cool. Cause like if someone hits it, like the first, like hits a home run, the first thing is like, where's the chain? Like everyone's like scattering, trying to find the chain. Um, so that's kind of cool. And, uh, we have, we usually have that person. We can't really huddle at home plate anymore because of COVID rules. So, uh, we just have, we just wait at the end of the dugout for them. So it's pretty cool to kind of see that. And it's actually been a little bit better because, um, the people who take our pictures can kind of get live like videos and pictures of us putting the chain on as of if we're at home plate, they wouldn't be able to do that. So it's been kind of cool just to see like the videos and pictures and stuff. And then this might just be a yes or no question, but um, does it have a nickname? It does not, but that might be something that we should think about. <laughs> and then just a last question for me, is there, a, is there a story that sticks out of you with the chain? You know, maybe you giving it to somebody or somebody giving it to you or just a memorable moment with it? Um, honestly, not that I know of. I don't think so. <laughs> All right. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Hi, Sydney. Hello. Uh, I just have a question about um, just the team in general. Just how um, how have you seen the team? Uh, what are some of the things that you're doing well lately? Uh, and maybe some things that the team might can improve on going into these this final stretch of the season? Yeah, um, I think we've been doing really well just kind of playing together and getting our offense kind of back rolling. Um, I think that our mentality needs to maybe get a little bit better heading into the next six games, just of like, we need to score more runs. Um, That's something we've kind of lacked in a little bit this season. Um, So I think we just need to really think about having our pitchers back because they've pitched really well for us and uh, just really trying to score as many runs as possible going into these next six games because Texas and OU both have very strong offenses. So I think if we can get ahead first and jump on them, it'll kind of put them down. So I think the biggest thing for us is just kind of going in with um, attitudes of we're going to score first and keep scoring every inning. Uh, Coach Kajewski talked about how when teams are pretty evenly matched or, you know, the competition gets harder, uh, the game kind of speeds up. Uh, Mm -hmm. So can you kind of talk about as a player just what that – entails what does it mean to as the game is speeding up and how do you combat that 
Yeah. I think we do a really good job as a team of not letting it speed up, to be honest. And I don't know if that comes with our team being a little bit older and having a lot of experience, but that's something that we all handle really well is if something gets out of hand, we usually don't let it spiral. So that's a really good quality that I think our team has. And then, um, you know, if it does speed up, we just have to slow it down, maybe call timeout, regroup, and then get back to it. So um, I think that we do a really good job of being able to maintain the pace of the game. So I, I've asked you questions like this before, but comparing this team to the last time OSU made the Women's College World Series in 2019, you see some of the same qualities, the same, you know, attitudes as you saw in that team towards the end of the season compared to now. Yeah, for sure. Um, we definitely have a couple new players, but I think that we kind of just felt like we picked off or picked up where we left off from last year. So mostly it's been the same. Um, it's been a little bit more up and down this year. And I think, I mean, you can blame that on whatever. I mean, taking a year off from COVID or um, just not having the best offense that we've had. So um, I think we just have to have good mindsets and we still have that mentality of knowing that we're really good and that we have a really good chance of winning the whole thing. So, um, yeah, I think it's pretty similar to last year's team. Thank you, Sydney. Good luck this week. Thanks. Mike. Thank you. Hey, Sydney, I, I wanted to ask you, you guys have one of the nation's most dominant pitching staffs. What's it like for the offense to go into a game knowing that and going to compete real strong every, every time out? Um, yeah, it's, it, it takes pressure off of the offense for sure. But I think it also adds a little bit because we just know that we want to do really well for our pitchers because they do hold teams to less runs. Um, I think that we sometimes the offense wants to do so well for them that we struggle at times just getting a couple of runs across the board. So I think our, our goal kind of just going into the next six games just to try to string together good quality at bats, whether it's bunts, walks, getting hit by pitch. So um, yeah, our pitchers have been awesome for us. They've, they've made every game definitely winnable for the offense. Um, so yeah, I'm just excited for them this weekend. I think they're going to definitely um, keep Texas and OU off the board. That, so the offense just has to kind of do their thing and score runs for them. What's it been like seeing Kerry and Kelly have the type of seasons they had, especially after starting and really abruptly stopping their OSU playing careers last season due to COVID? Yeah, um, it's really exciting. Um, I know that, you know, there's there's definitely been worries, not worries, but from everyone on the team, just taking a year off is a long time. So I think they're really excited about how they've performed this year and we're excited. So as hitters and as the offense, we're just going to have to step up a little bit and get them some more runs because they've definitely been doing their jobs. Last question, Sydney, just you personally, what's it like? It's been a long ride for you and you've seen so much during your journey. What's it like yeah. really coming coming to a close? Are you going to just embrace and soak in everything these next few weeks and months? Yeah, so I actually am going to uh, come back next year. So I'll have one more year. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to take my extra year. So um, it's definitely not – it, it helped my decision on coming back because I think I just kind of was getting closer and I didn't really want it to end yet. Um, so, yeah, I'm just kind of embracing this year and – kind of seeing it as my junior year of softball, I guess. And then um, I'll be back next year. So you're going to set a record and never be beat on games played, aren't you? <laughs> I know. I beat. hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Sydney, thanks so much. And uh, good luck this weekend. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Sydney, I'm going to jump in here real quick. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take another turn real quick because I got to ask. It's something I can't help but notice every game from the press boxes. You're the only player on the field that doesn't wear a visor. So uh, why is that? I, I'm, I'm curious. I really don't have an answer. <laughs> I don't think I really look good in one, if that's the best thing I can give you. <laughs> I just like my headbands. I wear headbands. So, um, yeah, visors kind of get in my way. I don't know. But, yeah, hey, that's, I respect that's, that. <laughs> that's funny. Like to... Yeah, that's but... Isn't it, isn't it uh, Deion Sanders that said, look good, feel good, feel good, play good? Hey, exactly. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> hey, uh, I, I remember back in my intramural days, I, I kind of blamed a, uh, a, missed, a missst fly ball a, a little bit on my hat. So I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you go by that as well. I don't know <laughs> if I contribute for you, but I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Thanks.
<laughs> That's funny. All right, is that all for Sid? I think so. All right, thank you, Sydney. Awesome, thanks guys. Appreciate sending me something, Megan.